Hi, so in this video, I would like to continue our discussion on counting. In particular, I would like to talk about K combinations and the binomial formula. So we were talking about uh, situations where we were sampling from a set of size n. And now we want to talk about unordered sampling without replacement. So we have a set of size n. Let's say it's 1, 2, 3, up to n. And I want to choose K element from that set. So I'm choosing k element from that set, but uh, it is unordered, so it, I don't care in which order I choose them. And also, it's without replacement, which means that repetition is not allowed. So I cannot choose the same element twice. Basically, another way of saying this is that I'm choosing a k element subset of this set, right? a subset of size k. And another word for this is a K combination. It means the same thing uh, of set A, of set A, right? So the question is, how many of those do we have? How many subsets of size K A has? So we have a notation for uh, the number of K element subsets of A. Basically. Uh, what we are doing here is we have n elements, we want to choose k of them. So we call it n choose k as n choose k. And that is the notation that we use. This is the number of k combinations or, as I said, a k element subsets of A where A has a n elements. So we are looking for this number. Now, uh, let's look at a simple uh, case where A has three elements. And let's say K equals two. So I want to choose two elements. How many options do I have? Well, it could be one and two, two and three, uh, and one and three. That's all, right? Three of them. So how do we solve it in general case? Well, for the general case, so I have a set A with N elements. And for the time being, let's uh, assume that ordering matters, right? If ordering matters, we know how to solve this. Well, I'm going to choose k elements. Uh, let's say this is the first one that I'm going to choose. This is the second, third, and that is the kth one. Now, for the first one, I have n options, right? I can choose any of the elements in the set. For the second one, I have only n minus, n minus 1 options because I cannot choose the, uh, the first element. For the third one, I have n minus 2 because I cannot choose these two, and so on. And the last one, I have n minus k plus 1 options. So this is going to be n times n minus 1 times n minus 2. And we saw this before. Uh, we can rewrite this as n factorial divided by n minus k factorial. And this is actually p, n, and k, the number of k permutations uh, of the set A. Now, here, ordering matters, but we are in n choose k, ordering does not matter. How do we solve this problem? Well, if I have k elements, in how many ways uh, I can order them? k factorial, right? Because the first element can be any of the k elements. The, the second one is just k minus 1 out of k minus 1 possibilities and so on. So if I have k elements, I can order them in k factorial ways. Now, here, I am overcounting the number of k subsets because for any k subset, I am counting it k factorial times. So I'm overcounting. In other words, what I'm saying here is if I divide p and k by k factorial, I obtain n choose k. And you know, just using this formula, it becomes n factorial divided by k factorial n minus k factorial. Okay, so let's summarize. The number of k combinations of an n element set is given by n choose k. n choose k. So a typical scenario basically here is that, you know, problems that you will see is that uh, you have, a, you know, n people, you want to choose a committee K people. How many ways we can do that? How many ways I can? In how many ways I can choose K people out of N people? And of course the answer is N choose K. 
So um, in this example, uh, I ask that I choose three cards from uh, the standard deck of cards. What is the probability that these cards contain at least one ace? So I suggest that you solve this problem before watching the rest of the video. Okay, so let's solve this problem. I choose three cards uh, and I have 52 cards, right? So there are 52 cards and there are four aces, right? Um, now, usually when we see the word at least, it, it might be easier to look at the complement. So it, it might be easier to find the probability that uh, there is no ace. So let A be the event that there is at least one ace. So A complement is going to be, you know, there is no ace in, you know, in the three cards that I choose. So probability of A is 1 minus probability of A complement. So to find probability of A complement, again, you know, all cards are equally likely. So this is a finite sample space with equally likely outcomes. So uh, all I need to do is just the count uh, number of elements in A complement divided by the total number of possibilities, right? Now, in how many ways I can choose three cards from 52 cards? This is exactly n choose k, right? We have seen this. So the number of elements that I, the number of ways that I can choose three cards out of 52 cards is 52 choose three. Now, in how many ways I can choose three cards such that there is no ace in it, right? Well, I have 52 cards, there are four aces, and there are 48 cards that are not ace, right? So I'm choosing one of these. So the number of elements in A complement is basically 48 choose 3. So I choose three cards from the cards that are not ace, right? So I'm done. This probability of A is 1 minus probability of A complement is equal to 1 minus the number of elements in A complement is 48, choose 3, and the number of elements in S uh, is 52, choose 3. And that is the answer. And usually it's okay to leave it uh, this uh, in this form. If you have a calculator, we can you know, calculate what that number is. So here I have a question for you. I have K people, or let's say I have N people. And I want to divide them in two groups. Group A, such that it has, you know, K people in it, K elements. And group B, consisting of uh, N minus K people, right? So I want to divide them in two groups. One group has K people in it. The other group has N minus K people. How many ways I can do this? What you would say that, well, out of the N people, you choose K of them. Put them in the first group. Whoever is left is going to be in the second group, right? In group B. So basically, the total number of ways of doing this is the exactly n choose k. Because I'm choosing k people out of n people for, for group A. Whoever is left is in group B. So this is just another interpretation of n choose k. Which says that the number of ways to divide n distinct objects or people into groups A and B such that group A consists of k objects and group B consists of n minus k objects is n choose k. Now, this is interesting in the sense that we can easily generalize it to, um, you know, more than two groups. So let's say you have n people. I want to divide them to, you know, several groups such that the first group has n1 people in it. Or the second group has n2 people in it, and the last group has nr people in it. Of course, n1 plus n2 up to nr must be equal to n. In how many ways we can do this? We, again, we just extend the notation. is n choose n1, n2 up to nr. And you, you can generalize the, the formula that we had, the n choose k formula, to a formula for a, you know, r groups. It's just n factorial divided by n1 factorial. Uh, divided by n2 factorials and so on. And for uh, if I have only two groups down here, uh, you know, it reduces to the n choose k formula. But this is more general. And these are called uh, multinomial coefficients. So 
so by the way n choose k is uh, called binomial coefficients and the reason for that is uh, if you are familiar with the extension of the you know a, a expansion of a plus b power of n we have this formula this is equal to k from 0 to n n choose k a to the k b to the n minus k this is just from algebra you can show that uh, this is equal and that's why these n choose k k's are called binomial coefficients so finally let's talk about Bernoulli trials and binomial distribution so this is a very famous and important distribution probability and here is a question that I would like to you to solve. Suppose that I have a coin for which probability of heads is equal to p, probability of t is equal to, probability of tails is 1 minus p, um, and I toss the coin five times. So I have a set of questions for you, and I suggest that you stop the video and solve them before watching the rest of the video. Okay, so let's solve this problem. Now, what is the probability that the outcome is tails, heads, 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 heads? Note that the important assumption here is that the different coin tosses are independent. So when I'm looking to, at, at the probability of this event, I can simply multiply the probabilities. This is probability of tails multiplied by probability of heads multiplied by probability of heads multiplied by probability of heads and the last heads. So probability of tails is 1 minus p. Probability of heads is p. So I have 1 minus p to uh, actually, I have four p's, so it's going to be um, 1 minus p times p to the fourth, right? The second part of the question, what is the probability that the outcome is heads, tails, heads, heads, heads? See, again, I will have probability of heads, which is p, times probability of heads, which is 1 minus p, times p, times p, times p, which is, again, four p to the fourth, 1 minus p. So another question is, what is the probability of this thing? This is exactly the same. It's just multiplication of uh, the probabilities, which you obtain p to the fourth, 1 minus p. And the next part, part d, is asking what is the probability that I observe exactly four heads and one tails. So, well, there are many ways I can obtain exactly four heads and one tails. Basically, I'm asking what is the probability of uh, you know, tails, heads, 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 or heads, tails, tail, heads, 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 tails, heads, 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 tails, heads, and heads, 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 tails, right? I'm asking probability of, you know, what is the probability that the outcome is one of these? Uh, basically, there is five of them, right? Uh, I have five positions and I just want to have one tails, so I put tails in either in the first position, second position, third, fourth, and fifth. So there is five of them and each of them uh, has probability, we found the probability of each of them is 1 minus p, p to the fourth. So the probability of the entire event is the summation of the probabilities because these events are disjoint. So we just add the probabilities of each uh, outcome. Uh, here, so it becomes five times, uh, sorry, one minus p times p to the fourth, right? And part e is asking what is the probability that you observe, observe exactly three heads and two tails? Well, so let's see. I'm asking, so part e. The probability of so what are the possibilities here exactly two um, three heads so I might choose uh, have three heads and two tails uh, heads heads tails heads tails it looks like there is a lot of them right now so first of all what is the probability of each of these probability of this well, probability of this is, again, p times p times p times 1 minus p times 1 minus p. Probability of the next one is the same thing, right? 1 minus p, sorry. 
is p, p1 minus p, p1 minus p. So the probability of each of individual outcomes in this big set is basically p to the 3, 1 minus p to the 2. Now, if I know how many of them are there, then I'm done because it's just multiply this by the total number of elements in that set. So let's call this big set, you know, set A. So probability of A is equal to the number of elements in A times P to the 3, 1 minus P squared. Okay, so how many elements are in A? So, or another way of asking this question is that how many sequences that I can make using three H's and two T's? How many sequences can I make, right? So let's say I have five spots, what well, five places, and I need to put H in three of them, right? Whatever is left, it's going to be T's. I have five places, I need to choose three of them. So five choose three. So the total number of elements in A is equal to five choose three. So probability of A, which was probability of getting three heads and two tails, is in fact five choose three, P to the three, one minus P squared. So that is the answer to part E. And finally, for part F, we are asking a general uh, scenario. I toss a coin n times. What is the probability that I observe exactly k heads and n minus k tails? So part F, you can exactly generalize the above argument. And probability is, let's, again, let's call it event A is going to be n choose k, you know, 5 is n here, k is 3, p to the k, k, 1 minus p to the n minus k. This is the big famous binomial formula.